With just two days to go now before that August 2nd deadline, signs are mounting tonight that the long and bitter debt ceiling debate may finally be over. Congressional leaders say a compromise package is taking shape and could be put to a vote before the markets open for the week. Congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Nancy, good evening. Russ, good evening to you. Democratic Senate leader Harry Reid announced earlier this evening that he is signing off on the deal. Republican leaders told us all day long they were close, but that they still have one outstanding issue, and that is cuts to defense. Speaker. After months of negotiations and stalemates and accusations, both sides say they have crafted a compromise to raise the debt ceiling. We're hopeful and confident it can be done. As the president and Democrats wanted, the plan would raise the debt ceiling by $2.4 trillion, enough to get the government through the end of 2012. As Republicans wanted, deficit cuts would exceed that amount, up to $3 trillion worth, a trillion now, and the rest to be determined by a new bipartisan committee of 12 lawmakers, six Republicans, six Democrats. That committee would have until this Thanksgiving to present Congress with a package of cuts for an up or down vote. A no vote would trigger serious consequences, like harsh across-the-board cuts. Nailing down that trigger was the main sticking point for negotiators all day long, throwing the Senate into a state of uncertainty. Many members would probably like to leave the Capitol if we're not going to be uh, voting. I would, I would say to my friend, um, that's an appropriate thing to do. I would not suggest a ball game, though. <laughs> Maybe closer than that. But reaching a deal is only half the battle. Leaders still have to sell it to members. Already, the leader of a large coalition of House liberals says he will vote against it. This deal trades people's livelihoods for the votes of a few unappeasable right-wing radicals, writes Arizona Congressman Raul Grijalva. I will not support it. Several Tea Party Republicans, like Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois, aren't satisfied either. We can do better and we have to do better. What they will cobble together is not going to change the disastrous fiscal trajectory we're on. Democratic and Republican leaders are scheduling conference calls with their members to announce to them what's in the deal. But we're told tonight that the current shape of that trigger involves 3 percent cuts to defense. And that's what has Republicans hung up right now, Russ. Uh, Nancy, do you get the impression that there are folks on both sides of this who are going to, to borrow a phrase, hold their nose to just go along with it? Not so much in the Senate, Russ. I think there are a lot of members there who think that this is what the eventual compromise was going to look like all along. They seem pretty happy with it. It's in the House where you have a lot of liberals who feel that the Republican, with, that the president rather, gave away too much. You have Republicans who feel that the cuts aren't deep enough, and that's where leaders are really going to have to cobble together a coalition of moderates to vote yes. Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill. Thank you very much.